anyone come on in? We'll just uh, wait a few seconds to allow people to join us. Oh, I see that lots of people are coming on. This is really exciting. Oh, super. Welcome to everybody. So hello. Welcome to PNP Live. My name is Anna. I am a bookseller in the children's and teens department at Politics and Prose, and we thank you for joining us and tuning into this format where we continue to bring authors and new books to you. I am thrilled to be with Sean Harris, bringing you his authorial debut, Have You Ever Seen a Flower? That means that Sean created both the text and the images in this book, and both are just joyful and full of light. We are going to drop the purchase link in the chat so you can get your own copy of Have You Ever Seen a Flower? And when you do, while supplies last, it will come with a signed book plate, this gorgeous print featuring art from the book, and a packet of seeds for flowers that will hopefully, when they bloom, inspire you to really look deeply at a flower and maybe draw some too. So at the end of Sean's presentation, he'll have time to answer some of your questions. If you have one, click on the Q&A button that's at the bottom of your screen, add your question there, we are really excited to hear from young readers. So if you are a young reader, just list your first name and your age. Also, folks can upvote questions that you like and you know you want answered. So now we're on to the event that you're waiting for. Sean Harris got his start illustrating album art for bands that he met while touring the world as a musician himself. His first picture book, Her Right Foot by David Eggers, was the recipient of seven starred reviews. His other books for kids include What Can a Citizen Do, also by Eggers, Everyone's Awake by Colin Malloy, A Polar Bear in the Snow by Mac Barnett, and now, Have You Ever Seen a Flower? Sean is joining us from Northern California where it is early, and where he likes to surf and play racquetball. Sean, I've loved watching you create flowers on your Instagram page, and I'm so excited to hear more about this beautiful book. Welcome, Sean. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction, Anna. Thank you for inviting me to come out virtually to DC today to join you at Politics and Prose. Um, well, like you said, I am an author and illustrator now. This book that just came out is the first book, which I have done both jobs, both bookmaking jobs on. Um, before that, I was, just, I was just an illustrator. I just did the pictures in a bunch of books. And if you've seen any of my other books, like A Polar Bear in the Snow, written by author Mac Barnett, you'll know that I have paper when I make my art. This book, the new one, it's a little bit different. I used a different medium. And actually, I'd like to read you guys this book. Uh, while I'm reading it for you, maybe you can study the illustrations while I'm reading it and uh, see if you can figure out what, what tools I use to make this book. And after I read the book, I'd love to draw four or with you. So if you have any drawing supplies there, paper, uh, oh, I feel like this is going to be a spoiler because I'm going to tell you what drawing supplies you might want to use. You know what, whatever drawing supplies you have there, no spoilers. All right, here we go. I am going to turn my camera around so that you're facing my desk here. And let's read. Have you ever seen a flower? Have you ever seen a flower? By me, Sean Harris. Oh, and hey, look. This might be a copy from Politics and Prose because it has a signed book plate in it.
Have you ever seen a flower? <laughs> Have you ever seen a flower? I mean, really seen a flower. Hey, Sean, we're yes. having a little bit of a problem with the visual. I'm so sorry, okay. participants, um, okay. but I just got some information that we just need to pause a little bit. Okay. Um, so I would love to see your face again, and maybe I could ask you a few questions until sure. we get some information from our other friend and <laughs> see if it comes back again. All right, let's see. Let's see. <laughs> So um, just while we're while I'm waiting to hear, I'll just wait for a text from my administrator here. And uh, while we do that, I just have a couple of questions for you. Um, so uh, I was wondering with all the deadlines that you need to do, um, I'm wondering about if you find time to play with your art. How do you find time to play? And what does that look for look like? Well, Usually, um, usually between books, I like to go and visit classes and draw with kids and do workshops where I draw with kids. A lot of my art techniques are I've actually learned from drawing with from drawing with kids. I like to use art mediums that you might have at your house or your classroom. Um, I don't know. You, you've seen some pictures in this book. You may have guessed that yes, I used colored pencils in this book. Um, and I told you before that I like to use cut paper. So I actually used a combination of colored pencils and cut paper to make the illustrations in this book. And I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you a little tutorial on how I did it later, but um, I started using colored pencils because my niece uh, who was seven at the time got really into using colored pencils. So drawing drawing together with her, I was like, okay, let's, I need to use this, these art supplies. That sounds so great. So yeah. you know what, we're gonna go ahead and get right back on there and head back to the book. Why don't we okay. um, skip over? So the child character has gotten in the car and gone through from, is leaving the city. And we would love to start there. All right, sounds good. Cue the music. Here Cue we the go. music. Here we Cue go. Cue the music. All right, everybody. On the last episode, we were three pages into this book. Have you ever seen a flower? I mean, really seen a flower. I mean, way down in the clover with your face down in a flower. Have you ever seen a flower using nothing but your nose? Breathe deep. What do you see? Everybody breathe deep with me. <sighs> Raindrops made of honey. The knees of bumblebees, a fancy lady, dancing babies at the Royal Jelly Jubilee. Have you ever seen a flower so deep you had to shout, hello? Everybody shout hello with me. Hello, hello, hello. And listen for an echo just to know how deep it goes. And did you wonder if you wandered down between its golden columns and into its corridors, who 
you might meet maybe a tiny queen. Have you ever felt a flower? Do a flower petal's veins feel like the veins beneath your skin? Have you ever pricked your finger or fallen on your knee and seen the brilliant color of your life? Life is inside you. Life is all around you. Now, <clears throat> put your hands on your belly like this and say, this is my stem. Everybody go ahead and say it. This is my stem. Now, sip a drip of water and stand very still. Feel it slip and trickle all the way down to your roots. Do you feel yourself growing? Do you feel yourself stretching toward the sun, ready to burst? <gasps> and bloom? Have you ever been a flower? I mean, really been a flower. And if you were, would you remember? Try and see. And that is the end of this book. Oh, wow. Thank you, everybody. I hear, I hear all of that thunderous applause. I hear all of that thunderous applause. Thank you so much. Wow. Wow. Thanks for being here with me. Thanks for listening to that book. Thanks for sitting through that crazy cliffhanger that happened on between page three and four. Wow. We were on the edge of our seats there, weren't we? Okay. Now, like I said, I think I think I think that you were here when I told you when I answered the question that I asked earlier, what tools I used to make this book. Yes, you guessed right, colored pencils, and I figured out to use how to use cut paper in there. People say, Sean, what's your favorite art? medium to use and I say cut paper. So to work with these colored pencils, I would love to show you how I used cut paper to make stencils for my colored pencil illustration. Now, if you're if you want to draw along with me, I like it when people draw along with me. If you just want to watch me draw right now, that's totally fine also. Um, if you want to draw along with me and you have colored pencils and a pair of scissors and a couple pieces of paper, that's cool. If you don't have those supplies, but you've got like some markers sitting there and a couple pieces of paper, well, that, that'll work just fine also, okay? So um, I can show you these techniques and then maybe later you can try them out with the same materials that I used if you want, or you can use totally different materials. Art is all about experimenting and you might find a cool new technique from drawing along with me, even if you don't have the same materials that I have. So I'm gonna flip my camera around again so you can all see my desk here. This is where I draw. All right. So I've got, a, I've got a couple little pieces of paper here. This is a scratch piece of paper. As you can see, this isn't a uh, really a drawing of anything. I don't know what I was thinking here. Um, and this is gonna be what I'm going to draw on. This is actually just a piece of paper cut into four, four pieces. So um, the first thing that I'm gonna do is with my scratch piece of paper, I'm going to fold it in half. I'm actually going to fold it in half this way. All right. Then I'm going to take my scissors. And again, if you don't have scissors there, you can actually rip 
your paper right here. You can actually rip the paper. But anyway, what, what I've done is I've folded this paper in half and I'm gonna be cutting or tearing on the side of the paper that has the fold. Anybody ever made a paper snowflake before where you fold a piece of paper up and cut shapes into it? That's kind of like what we're doing here. So I'm gonna start by tearing just for anybody that, uh, that doesn't have scissors there so you don't feel left out. And I'm just tearing a shape out of the side of my paper here. And just so you can see what we're doing here. When I tear that shape out and I unfold it, we get a shape like this or like whatever we tore out, but it doubles down the middle there and we get to the middle of our paper, which makes a great stencil. So I'm gonna fold it back up again. And now I'm gonna use my scissors and I'm going to cut a second shape. Let's, let's work with uh, three shapes today. This shape that I'm cutting is gonna end up being the, leave, the leaves of my flower. It's a bit abstract right now. And I would like to, when I work on art, I like creating a scenario for myself an environment where I'm not, I'm not really able to judge my work while I'm working on it. Oh, look at that. When we unfold it, we got those shapes. Interesting. And now the last one, the last shape I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna cut a little, I'm gonna make a little mound of dirt down here. So this is gonna be like, kind of like a, a wolf's tooth that I cut out there. When we unfold it, this is going to be our three shapes that are a flower template. Do you already see the flower? It's actually just looking at this white stencil with some scribbles on it in front of white paper. Actually, if I flip it that way, you can see it's actually very similar to the art that I did in this book with cut out white paper on top of white paper, huh? Interesting. All right. So we've got this flower stencil cut out. I'm going to put that paper on top of the other one. And then I'm going to take my colored pencils here and um, I'm just going to go ahead and start coloring over the edge of the hole in my paper that we cut out, this stencil. You'll notice that when I'm, when I'm coloring or scribbling here, uh, I'm the direction of my marks are going over the edge of the stencil right here. Now I do that because if I, if the direction of my marks go towards the stencil, it, it'll probably pick up my paper. It might even rip my stencil paper. These stencils can be a little bit fragile. So I just kind of directionally make my marks in over the side of the stencil so that I'm not fighting with my stencil. Nobody wants to fight a stencil. Here we go. I've got a second color right here. This is like a, this is like a neon pink that I'm bringing in here, just for a little flavor. Now, I like to work with stencils with colored pencils because because um, I'm not I'm just thinking about color and texture right now, and I think that's very helpful to have a method to make art with where I'm not thinking about, like when I draw, if I just looked at a flower and went to, to go draw it with lines, line by line and make every petal like the petal that I was seeing on a, on a flower I was studying. Well, that's one way to draw, but when I draw that way, there's a voice inside of my head that goes, ah, I didn't do that line in the right place or that doesn't quite look right. Or like, why doesn't this look as good as the flower that I'm drawing? There's that voice in the back of my head while I'm making art, I don't like to listen to that voice. I like to just make art. And here, when I'm drawing with the stencil, I'm not really thinking about like, did I do that right? I mean, look how messy this looks. This looks like this looks like I'm teaching you how to make a mess right here, right? But that's kind of nice because we're doing a pretty good job at making a mess. Like nobody's nobody's judging our mess. We're not judging our own mess, right? So I like, I like figuring out techniques where I'm, uh, where I'm not judging my work while I'm working on it. 
you'll notice I, I mentioned before that these are going to be our leaves and I'm using blue. Maybe you've seen a plant with blue leaves before, but I've got a cool trick to show you. I actually didn't use any green colored pencils while I made this book about flowers, which you may have noticed has quite a bit of green on the pages. But this is how I this is how I got my green. So actually, I'm going to take a, a darker blue here. Just mix in a few colors. Cool, cool, cool. Just like that. And OK, here's here's the cool trick with blues. If you take a yellow colored pencil. And you color over the blue. Check out this awesome shade of green these colors blend together to make. And when we're working with these stencils, I love blending colors together, mixing them, seeing what colors mix together and make other colors. Let's even take a little bit of this magenta here and bring it in on the bottom of these leaves. Sounds cool. Just like that. And then for this, I mentioned this is going to be a mound of dirt. I'm just, I'm going to put every color in the bottom here. I, this is actually a colored pencil that has every color in it. It's a seven way colored pencil. It changes colors while I draw. I don't even have to switch colored pencils. Look at that. Some purple, some orange, some yellow. I'm bringing some blue in here, some dark blue. I'm bringing in some yellow. I am making a muddy mess. All right, this is my favorite part. Everybody, I know some of you are coloring along with me over there. You might want to stop what you're doing really quick and just watch the reveal. Dun, 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 dun. When I take the stencil away. Ooh, look at that. How fun is that? Look at those nice edges. Wow, look at that. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do, you might notice, Sean, your flower is without stem. Embarrassing. Here we go. I'm going to make a bit of a make a bit of a curvy stem. I'm using my rainbow pencil. You can use whatever color you want. I'm going to color over that with yellow. Give it a little sunlight. Boom. The last thing that I want to do here, the last thing that I'm going to do to my flower, and you guys. You guys know what 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 day Sunday is? Sunday is Mother's Day. If you if you like how your flower turns out, I'm just saying this could make a pretty good Mother's Day card. I mean, if, if your mom is there watching along with you, I mean, like I didn't. You you were probably not going to do this because it's got to be a surprise. But you know, just 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 saying. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do, I've got seven way colored pencil right here, but you can use any color you want. I am going to sign my work down here. Now, my name is Sean, first name Sean, that starts with an S, last name Harris, that starts with an H. I have this little signature that I do that combines an S and an H. That is my artist signature. Those are my initials. What are your initials? Can you make an artist signature out of your initials? All right, everybody, how are your flowers looking? How are those turning out? If anybody has any questions for me about, uh, about making books, making flowers, making stencils, I would love to hear your questions. Hi, Anna. And I am Welcome here, back. although I was, I will admit that I was busy in with my flower. So Ooh, uh, good, look at that. Yeah, so I, I was working on that. But I'm super Beautiful. excited to hear from people. And um, so once again, just to remind you, please put your questions down in the Q&A. Um, I do have one here. So I'm really excited to give you this question from uh, Lafayette Elementary. May is there. And she's wondering if you took notes about flowers to help you write this book. Uh, May, I have a sketchbook that I take with me just about everywhere. It looks like this. And this is my version, This in this book is my version of notes. They're, um, well, would you call that a note, May? 
don't know if I would call it a note, but when I go places, I draw things that I see. Those are like my visual notes. And I drew a lot of flowers. In fact, I actually, the flower that we drew today, I had a little note for that flower. I sketched it on a little post-it note, what I thought the flower might look like before we even did our workshop today. So I was like, I've got an idea for a cool shape. Excellent. Yeah, so, good question, um, Meg. That's a great question. So we've got a question here from Ronan, also at Lafayette. And um, uh, so could you talk a little bit about um, the kinds of pencils that you use? Like, do you use a specific kind of pencil when you create a stencil? Are all the stencils different or, and they just come up or have you planned out all the stencils? So um, that's from Ronan. Good question, Ronan. That's like, that's a lot of questions in one. Um, I, uh, I'm not sponsored by a certain brand of colored pencils yet. Um, so I just kind of, I, I like to go, um, I like to go to the art store and just look for individual pencils um, that the colors make me happy. Oftentimes they have like a little scratch pad there at the, at the art store and you can kind of test out all the, all the colors that you think might be interesting. So that's one of my favorite little uh, hobbies to do is go down to the store and test pencils. Yeah. Um, and yeah, when, I, when, you work with, when you work with stencils like this, there are so many techniques that you can discover. In fact, like these shapes that we cut out, we can use these, we, can, we could use what we used for the leaves to actually make the petals for our next flower. We could use this shape. On my Instagram, I've made flowers using quarters as stencils. Um, sometimes I cut them freehand. Sometimes, uh, sometimes I, 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 I use paint brushes as, as stencils. So there's all kinds of techniques that you can use and you can actually use paint with stencils. You can use markers with stencils. You should experiment. You might find some cool techniques. So Lila is at Capitol Hill Day School and she'd like to know a little bit more about blending colors. How do you blend so many colors? Yeah, well, Lila, my first, that first trick that I showed you with the, with the blue, drawing with blue and then adding yellow. That's one of my big go-to tricks is to not use any green colored pencils. Um, so that's one of my, that's, that's one color. And then I also know that when I blend all of the colors that I have together, it makes mud. Um, so those are my big two tricks. Um, and then I just experiment with the other ones, you know, so adding yellow to any color will kind of make it, will kind of kiss the whole color with sunshine. So you can try adding yellow. I actually have a cool, can I show you something that I have hanging in my, hanging in my office here? We'd love it. In, in, my, in my studio. I have this cool poster that was made by Natalie Anderson. And on it, we've got all these colors that she printed. And then she has see the colors sticking out the side so you can see there's some pink there purple and yellow and you see in the middle what they look like blended together and I've got this on the wall of my studio that I look at sometimes to get inspiration for what colors to mix together that's great so you're just yeah. layering and layering different colors and finding new colors you're you're like an explorer a color that's explorer right. that's right that's right that's amazing. Did you did you know did you know that when they print when they print our books like this book for instance they actually print the whole book using only three colors these three colors and black so that's they use four inks to print not every book, but most books, but we see like a rainbow of colors because of the way the inks mix on the page. Crazy, right? It's fabulous. Yeah. Juliet is in second grade at Lafayette and she would like to know when you started drawing. Uh, Juliet, I became a professional artist when I was in first grade. Um, I say professional because that's when I sold my first um, series of artwork um 
And, uh, and then I got in trouble because I found out that you're not supposed to sell things at school. I hadn't really considered <laughs> that. Um, but I figured out how to make prints. I was in first grade and somebody offered me their milk money to buy the drawing I was doing. But I, I really liked the, the drawing that I was working on. And I thought, well, but if I sell it, I won't have one for myself. And I figured out that I could hold the drawing up to the window. And when the light came through it, I could see the drawing. I could see the drawing through another piece of paper. So I put another piece of paper on top of that piece of paper, held it up to the window and traced it on the window. Come to find out later, that's what a light table is. You can have that on your desk. You don't need to draw on the window. But I sold that copy of the drawing and then somebody else wanted to buy another copy. I made about six or seven copies of that drawing um, before I got sent to the principal's office. <laughs> so you've been professional since first grade. I and, think, yeah, yeah. And did you, um, there's a question here, uh, sort of an extension of that. Um, I can't really find it right now, but um, it was, it's kind of like a, how did you learn to do art like that? So can you talk uh, about like, so from first grade, were, were there numerous classes? Did you get a degree in this? Or was it just you loving and being passionate about art? Uh yeah, I so I grew up in um, in the house that I grew up in. The house I grew up in was filled with art supplies, um, like all kinds of things that actually you wouldn't even consider art supplies. Probably like like tubs and garbage bags full of uh, aluminum bottle caps and uh, all kinds of wild stuff to make art and sculptures with. Because my mom was a children's art teacher, and she said we had people from our town like you know saving pull tabs from soda cans and bringing them to our house because to make like sculptural dragons with on the third friday in march or whatever like so yeah the house that i grew up in was full of art supplies um and every friday my mom my mom taught a full day of classes um to other kids in town so i got to use all of her supplies which was which was really cool and i think kicked me off on working with all kinds of different ways of making art. Um, I actually, I, I, I never got a degree in, I never got really too formal of training. I went to one year of, uh, one year of art school at the Academy of Art in San Francisco, but then I dropped out because my band got popular and we started touring the world. And I never went back to school, but I started getting a lot of jobs making art for other bands. And then I got jobs making art for books and I and and I just fabulous yeah <laughs> fabulous now I'm here yes <laughs> you love it it's yeah. in it's in those little drops of blood I think um yes. so a question here about why a book about flowers and are you mm -hmm. a gardener and do you have a favorite flower um I I wrote this book um to kind of as a reminder to myself to go and take off my shoes and walk in the grass or dirt um you know my my dog almost kind of wrote this book with me because my dog would be the one that would remind me sean get up from your desk you've been sitting here for hours mm. let's go and smell some flowers and walk around in some in some in some trees so the flower in this book I love drawing flowers they all have such different personalities but the flowers in this book are kind of you'll notice like they're sort of a portal for mm -hmm. us to go go through it into to start to investigate ourselves we even have this portal here that's right yeah. that's right so like in a very real way, the flowers are like our entry point for thinking about ourselves and our connection to the earth. That's so great. I, yeah. I have to ask, have you personally named this dog? I mean, I every dog that I that I draw, I think of I think of my dog. So um, but it, th that's not what my dog looks like. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let me, dog, let me grab is, another is, is question here. I like calling dogs. I like calling dogs little bug. Uh, little B-U-G? Bug? Little bugs. Little All bugs. right. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, so here's a question that I absolutely love, uh, and okay. it's something that we get in the shop all the time. Are your books for teens and adults too? Uh, are you a teen and adult? Did you just listen to that book? Did you like it? If so, yes. <laughs> absolutely. Picture books are for everyone. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, so uh, here's a question from, uh, I think it's Métis at Lafayette. And mm -hmm. she is asking, they are asking, um, how long does it take to create a book from beginning to end? That's a really good question. Um, I'm constantly trying to figure that out too. Uh, I'm not the best at budgeting my time and figuring out how long it's going to take me to make a book, but um, I know that I can, <laughs> I know that I can make, well, I'm working on the, my next book is, uh, or one of my four upcoming books is a 300 page graphic novel. That's taking a, a different amount of time than a picture book. Um, so I guess it depends on the book, but a picture book, um, I can, I, six months, maybe a year sometimes it depends on like how much experimentation I want to do until I land on the art style I showed you my sketchbook earlier sometimes I do thousands of sketches before I figure out what I want what medium I want to use for the book I like to read I like to read the words or in this case write the words and and uh and then figure out what medium to use and experiment a lot before I make a book so that can take I mean, there's not even a time limit on how long that can take. So Luckily, for, you, I haven't, for this I haven't book, did the it, words yeah. come first? For this book, the words came first. It kind of started almost like, almost like a, almost like a song almost. I mean, I, I write songs. So when I was trying to find my, uh, my tone as an author, I, I realized like, oh, just, just write a book the way that you write a song and that kind of unlocked it for me. Yeah. You'll notice in the book, there is kind of an arc to it, but it also just like hops around and, and kind of jumps from lily pad to lily pad. Um, and, and, and I think that that's kind of, that's kind of a, a hallmark of how I like to write songs. And stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, so there's Good a couple of everyone. questions asking yeah. about how many books you've made and what they're called. Um, I do have some of them right here. Yeah. Uh, so um, we have Her Right Foot and we have A Polar Bear in the Snow and we have Everyone's Awake over there and What Can a Citizen Do? So those four and then you've got some other ones coming out, right? What's coming down the pike? Yeah, the next one, let me see if I have it behind me. I just got my advanced copy for it. The next one is actually a potty training book. Oh, a sneak peek. Has anybody, yeah, here's a sneak peek. It's called Doing Business. The front <laughs> cover is an elephant doing business. That's a lot of poop for that potty. <laughs> <laughs> Am I allowed to say that? I don't know. Yeah, I, I, it's, your, it's your shop. It's that it said. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's my next book. And then after that, let's see if I can show you a sneak peek from. Yeah, you said a graphic the, novel. The first cat in, sp in space graphic novel. Here's the queen of the moon and, and the man in the moon. Wow. And I'm drawing, for that book, I'm drawing it with, with graphite. And then I'm scanning those graphite drawings and I'm coloring it digitally. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Um, I'm just taking a quick look at our, our questions again. So I think we've answered quite a few of these. Um, so I love that your inspiration was your dog and that you were able to get into nature. That's yes. wonderful. And we talked about how long it takes you. Um, I actually have another question. So the colors in this book just leap off the page. And so you talked about it being the printing process being that you have the, the, the pink, um, the blue and the yellow and the black. And then was there a period of time where you had to say, well, it doesn't look quite like what you are printing doesn't look quite like my work. And how did you get those two things together. I believe that's called color correction. 
Yeah, well, actually, I had a, I had a secret in this book. I'll tell you my secret. So I showed you the three colors that most books are printed with. Mm -hmm. These three plus black, right? Now, in my book, I was like, I want, I want those like those sunny pink tones to jump off the page more. So actually, instead of using this color ink, the normal magenta color, I substituted in a neon pink. And I mm. took that one away. So everything that was going to be normal magenta was printed with neon magenta. And that is what made the book oh. really jump off the page like that. Yeah. So it's a totally different ink than magenta. It's neon magenta. That's right. Pantone That's 806U. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So yeah. Tell us when you're not drawing or writing mm -hmm. music, um, yep. Wesley from Lafayette would like to know, do you have any other hobbies? Yes, uh, Wesley, I like to play racquetball with my old friend, Mac Barnett. He's an author. We've known each other since we were seven. Usually I have a picture of me and Mac sitting here on my desk when and we were seven. He's the person who did went. the words for this one, right? Yes, that is Mac Barnett. And he also wrote the first cat in space graphic novel with me. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, so that's our next project together. Um, and I also like to surf. I live, I live on the coast in California and I like to go surfing in the morning. But I'm here hanging out with you guys instead this morning. Well, we're really, really glad that you did. Um, in fact, we're coming to a close here. Uh, I want to thank all the students for your fabulous questions. They were really great. I do want to remind people that we do have a link in the chat for Have You Ever Seen a Flower with all this wonderful swag while supplies last, um, including all of these great things here. Um, and I also, of course, want to thank you, Sean. And you. I want to remind people that they can follow us on Twitter or Instagram at Kids and Pros. And the handle should also be posted in the chat. And then, um, Sean, what about your uh, handle on Instagram? Oh, I know you've been doing yeah, a lot of great me. things. You can follow me on Instagram. It's at Sean Harry Five. Sean Harry. Okay, look, it's my name. <laughs> I didn't, there was another Sean Harris. The, la the last S of my name is a five. So it's S-H-A-W-N-H-A-R-I five. And then a five. Yes, instead Sean of the Harry S. five. Got it. And uh, you'll be able to watch this event again if you missed anything or if you want to get out all of your supplies again and try that along with us. If you didn't have a chance to do that, you can watch it again because we are recording all of this. It's going to be on our Politics and Pros YouTube page. Look in the Kids and Teens playlist. Thanks again to everyone. We hope that you keep ride reading widely, excuse me, and expanding your world and stay safe.